beautiful day to play football in our house. In our house. You fly around and play fast. You fly around and play fast. Uh, you compete and have some fun. Hell, I hope you came here to be in this environment. Compete on every snap and have fun. Compete on every snap and have fun. And last, and most importantly, be physical. Be physical. They want to have a seven on seven drill. We want to make it a fist fight. You understand me? Clean, legal football. Nothing cheap, nothing dirty, but West Virginia football. West Virginia football. This is the long-awaited interview brought to you by MountaineerSports.com and hosted by Brad Smith, featuring former West Virginia head coach and current Ole Miss offensive coordinator, Rich Rodriguez. Thank you so much for uh, taking my call. I appreciate it. No, no problem. Yeah, I'm just run around a little bit, but uh, can I pick up a little bit. Good talk with you. Yeah, you too. Um, okay, I know you're busy, so I'm going to get right into some questions, if that's okay. Sure. Okay, so you're at Ole Miss now. What uh, makes Ole Miss such a special and unique opportunity for you? Well, it is uh, it is unique. I I, um, I have been through the state recruiting before, um, particularly junior colleges, and I did not know uh, Matt Lou, the head coach, but I knew Mike uh, McIntyre, who had just taken a defensive coordinator job. I knew Mike from his days at Colorado when I was at Arizona, and he called and uh, said that they had an offense coordinator's job open. And I said, well, I should talk to Matt about it. Um, and uh, I talked to him on the phone a couple of times, came out for an interview, really liked uh, his vision, the people that, he, that it was on the staff, and uh, the visit went great. And I thought, I think this is an opportunity to get back on the field. And, and I've been loving my time here so far. Oh, great. Do you do you enjoy being an offensive coordinator and just focusing on the offense, or do you think you might want to be a head coach again someday? Well, that's a fair question. You know, I've been a head coach really mostly for the last 20-some years, so I'm used to that. But I've also uh, stayed, obviously, close to the offense by call, uh, still called the plays. And so that kept me, you know, uh, I think, a little in tune more with – with um, with what's going on. I mean, I wake up. I don't wake up off teasing Matt, our head coach. I don't wake up with 99 problems every day. Maybe <laughs> just three or four. So that's kind of a, a blessing. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't. You know, you never know. I mean, I, I certainly enjoy being a head coach and wouldn't mind being one again. But I'm right now. I'm I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and I've always told. Um, all the young coaches when I hired them that treat every job like it's the last job you ever have and put your, you know, everything you have into it. And I'm certainly going to follow that on my own advice. Great. Um, how often do you get back to West Virginia? You know, I try to get back once a year. It was a little harder when I was out of Arizona because it's just, you know, a long ways away and uh, I had limited time. But uh, I think, you know, I, I try to get back at least once a year and I've got my mom is still there, and my brother's still there. Uh, you know, a lot of my closest friends are, are the West Virginia natives, live in West Virginia. So I'm hoping to get back uh, again maybe uh, sometime this spring uh, or, or this summer uh, for a few days and see see everybody. I, I mean, it's home, and, I, you know, I love the people there. Yeah. What do you love most about West Virginia? Well, it's, you know, I, I just think it's, you know, it's whether you live there born there, raised there, or went to school there and just fell in love with the place, it, it's really the people. I mean, they're uh, blue car, hardworking, uh, very friendly. Um, it's, um, you know, they'll, they'll do anything they can to help you in, in any way possible. And it was just, it was a great place to grow up in, and it was uh, certainly a great place to, to work at and play at and work at. Yeah. Do you stay in, in touch with any former West Virginia players at all? Yeah, um, uh, it's particularly the ones that are into coaching. You know, I see them uh, quite a bit. You know, I've had some of them on my staff, and, you know, some of them, like, for instance, now I'm in Mississippi, and just down the road is Pat White, mm-hmm. you know, who's, you know, obviously a mountain legend, and so I keep in touch with him, and I'm probably going to be able to chance to see him a few more times. Now he's into the profession, and he's just down the road. And so, yeah, I try, I try to as much as I can, and, and it's been, um, you know, that that's one part about 
coaching, you know, not just at West Virginia, but other places. You you develop relationships with other coaches and players that you are with, and, and you have that you know friendship for a lifetime. Yeah. Um, speaking of Pat White, is he is he the most prototypical quarterback for your offense that you've ever coached? <laughs> you know, I've had even he's probably the one that obviously one of the most recognizable ones, but I've had all kinds. You know, Pat White was was such a great player, but also what I try to tell by he's as great a, of a leader as anybody uh, could ever want or hope for uh, in a college football program. Because he, you know, obviously his his skill as a player was there, but his leadership skills were off the charts. And and you, you know, I saw that from recruiting in high school all the way through his career. So he, you know, if you ever got a guy that can run like that and, and can make the throws and, and has that leadership tangible, you got everything you want. And I've I've been very blessed to have uh, quite a few of those. Yeah. Do you uh, do you follow the West Virginia program closely? Oh sure. I thought you know probably not as closely during the season and and as or as closely as it was when I was in that part of the country. You know, being out west, you're kind of more focused on your own team and, and who you're playing. And then you get the, you know when you get in uh, a different league like now in the SEC, you're probably more focused on that. But you still because it's your alma mater, you you still watch them. You know when you get a chance to and still follow their progress. Sure. Do you know anything about Neil Brown? What do you think about Neil Brown, the new coach? I know him a little bit. Uh, you know, a little bit I know him. He's, just, you know, he's done an outstanding job. Good guy. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to him a couple of times. Um, you know, not a whole lot, but I know he, done, he, you know, he did an outstanding job at Troy. And then, of course, I know a couple of the guys he's hired. And, you know, Jamal died. And this one of my guys that played for me, coached for me, you know, I, a super coach, and then um, I guess he just hired Travis Trickett, who's another guy that was with me. He's, mm-hmm. he's an outstanding coach, and you know, he's, so he's got some, you know, a few guys on the staff that are that are Mountaineers through and through, but also uh, outstanding coaches. Yeah. Um, so, do you have a best memory in Morgantown? Uh, there's a couple. I think um, you know, obviously the your, your memory, and, and it, you know, when you're playing. You know, as, as the years go by, it seems like you get better. <laughs> you, you're a better player as the years go by, I think. But I, I, I do remember the, my first start when we beat Penn State in 84. Mm-hmm. And that was a quite a thrill. And then, you know, certainly in coaching, there was, there was, there was a lot of great memories. Um, in the, in the seven years there, was probably the one thing on the Circle Bowl probably stands out the, the biggest, uh, when you play Georgia in, in Atlanta. For sure. Yeah, I gotta ask you, what about the pit loss in 2007? Do you, do you, how often do you think about that loss? Well, it's it's uh, my worst football nightmare that I've ever had, so I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is really yeah. It's I'm mad at myself. I'm mad at you know depressed the way you know the way it all happened, and just feel heartbroken for for the for the players and for everybody involved, our fans and everybody, just because it's just, you know, we were having a great season and, you know, just everything that could go wrong that night went. But it was, uh, yeah, it was it was a football nightmare. But yeah. I'm sorry, I try not to think about it. Other than to learn from it. <laughs> um, well, what do you think happened? Do you think it was, I mean, did they just, uh, did they have the right defensive scheme? Was it offensive just not executing? Oh, uh, I'd have to, you know, like I said, I'm trying to forget about it the yeah. most, you know, best I can. I don't, you know, I remember it took a while before I would even watch it, but I had to eventually get to, you know, try to learn from it. And, you know, we didn't, you know, it was a lot of things went wrong, but I certainly, as a coach, I would love to take it, you know, or uh, have people make a few different calls and have a few other things that, um, that we could do to pull that out, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Do you do you think there's a chance you might have still been at WVU if that game would have gone the other way? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of speculation. You know, I think, you know, the, for a friend anybody to allude or try to say that, you know, we weren't focused on, or I wasn't focused on that game because I was looking to leave is, is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I mean, sure. it was the biggest game uh, my coaching career to date, and you know we had a great week of preparation, and um, you know we played, you know had a really good game. I think the week before, 
And so I think sometimes maybe you want things so much and it doesn't work out. And, you know, like I said, you can always wish you could do the game. But, you know, I've heard some people say or allude to, well, you know, he was, coach was looking to leave. Oh, that's ridiculous. I mean, it was the biggest game that we had played in a long time. And we was in the preparation and leading up to it was just a, you know, a bad night for us. Yeah. Um, a couple more questions, Coach, if you don't mind. Um, how has the offense evolved over the years? How has your offense evolved? You know, I think, you know, we were uh, probably back in the day, one of the first ones to do some of the, you know, the zone read and uh, with, with bubble screens and things that kind of go to. Now it's evolved to where you're doing more off of that with the RPOs and, you see even the teams in the NFL that never did it. Now you've got quite a few teams that are, that are having great success that are doing some of the spread concepts. So I think it's probably evolved from that standpoint and then also from the standpoint that formation where it's, you know, a lot of people are using, you know, tight ends and big jumbo athletes and put them in different spots in and out. We didn't do a lot of that back then, but we're doing a lot more of that now. Yeah. Um, okay, and you know we love you, we miss you in West Virginia, uh, Coach. Um, do you have a message to the to the West Virginians and to the fans here in Morgantown? Yeah, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I probably have not said this enough, you know, because you get kind of wrapped up in um, in the next job and trying to do the best you can there. But um, I love love my time there. You know, I appreciate the support. You know. All the time, you know, the Mountain fans are some of the best in the country, and I appreciate their support, um, you know, throughout the entire time. You know, I wish that I, I would have been uh, able to be more forthcoming, I think, when I left. You know, I was told, and it's my own fault. I mean, I was kind of told to, hey, move on and don't don't talk about anything. But I, um, I, I wish I was more forthcoming and, and, and talked about, you know, reasoning, reasons, or you know what, what I was thinking when I when I left. But that's a long time ago, and I'm, you know, I I just said I'm. I, I hope that uh, you know that most of the memories that people think about will be the good things. I and I certainly love the love the people in the state, love uh, the people that support our program, and and you know they say once a the mountain, they're always a mountain there, mountain there, and I truly believe that, and I hope that. Uh, that the people can look at it that way. Absolutely. Um, do you think you might retire at West Virginia when you when you decide to retire? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I think you know, um, like a lot of folks, maybe you look at the warm weather and in uh, or on a beach on a lake or something like that. But it's uh, I know this: there'll always be you know my and my closest friends that are there that that uh, have had their roots there and will be back, and I'm. I'm the same way, so there's always going to be a place I want to be able to go to, at least visit, if I don't have a have a place to. I don't know, you know, right now where where we will retire at. I just know I don't want to retire right now. I've <laughs> a few years left, and, and then we'll see what happens. Coach, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, and, you know, we wish you all the luck in the world down there in Old Miss. Okay, well, I appreciate you. Keep your time. All right, thanks, sir. Okay, all right, bye-bye.